Welcome to the Black Flash Boxing Channel. I'm Abs from October Red, and today we're joined by Wayne Smith from the Golden Gloves Boxing Gym in Toxteth in Liverpool. Welcome, Wayne. Thanks a lot. Wayne, you've been invited down to the Black Flash um, Boxing Channel to talk to us a little bit about your career, mm -hmm. uh, what you've done as a trainer, a little bit about your personal life as well, mm -hmm. uh, not relationship-wise. And your relationship that you've <laughs> you haven't established. Got long. <laughs> you haven't got long enough. <laughs> and the relationship that you've established with Pat. Mm -hmm. I know that you two are both uh, head coaches, mm -hmm. uh, lead coaches um, for Lyndon and for Zelfa. So just touching on your starting point, where you started in the uh, sport itself. Mm -hmm. Tell our viewers a little bit about that. Yeah, when I was, obviously when I was a kid, like at school, it was boxing and football. Um, I was just explaining it to you off camera. It was like I'm a seventies kid, so all we had was boxing and football. You know, we didn't have much else of anything. Boxing, football, boxing, football. They're the only sports we had. So you'd either be one or the other or do both. So um, I just like took to boxing. I just like loved boxing. I'd done karate. I'd done in judo um, and the boxing club I always wanted to go but every time I went I got sent home because I was too young do you know what I mean so I finally got into the golden gloves gym I think I was nine I got into it I uh, had my first competition that uh, bout at, at uh, 11 and then continued on from there do you know won some lost some won some lost some um, but I was happy to be involved in the sport. I loved the sport. Um, it was just it was just me all over. Um, done that till I was eighteen. Just just lived the life of boxing. Just was a boxer. That was all I knew. Couldn't be bothered with studying in school. Couldn't be bothered with. I wasn't really like 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 to learn anything. I was just boxing, football, <laughs> boxing. Yeah. But um, anyway, when I was when I was eighteen, I was training with the pros. Um, I was training um, Sugar J. Blero. I was training in the same gym as him, and he's. I wanted to turn pro, cause I used to go to Liverpool Stadium with all the the, the fights was in Liverpool. I used to love watching the fights. I used to like watch study all the, the Sugar Ray Robinson. I used to love all the style, and it was just it was just me all over. I just loved it. I was that flamboyant as well, which the amateurs wasn't really, I wasn't really getting wins because of the way, of my style, the way it was back then. Um, so anyway, goes and he just basically said, you're a bit, you're, you haven't, you haven't got your man strength yet. He said, still carry on training, carry on training, um, but you need to fill out a bit because you, you're going to turn pro, you, you've got the ability to, but you've got no man strength, you're only a boy, <laughs> basically, so. So he said, this like, next year, we'll see how you go. Keep training, keep training, and we'll see how you go. Uh, in the meantime, a lot of my friends started doing um, kickboxing, freestyle kickboxing. Um, so I just like started doing that as well. Um, not looking to pursue it, not looking to be a kickboxer, but just because a lot of my friends done it. But I, I found it really easy, you know, with the boxing stance and the... I was mainly just use my hands and Second it was just, nature. Yeah, it was a semi contact as well, mm. so I was just like flick bound this one one point. So it was like really easy and I went in a few competitions, won them easy. Um so yeah, it was good. It was it was good. The the old everything about it was good. Um until one time I went in competition. Um and the rest is history basically. Now I went in this competition that was semi contact I'd already said. Because there's no weight categories at, at them times. Wasn't there? Nah, nah, there's no weight categories. It was just, a, it was just adults or adults or ch children, you know what I mean? So anyway, I went into it, into this competition. Uh, developed a little bit of a shine in the first round. Um, got through to the final. By this time, the eye was closed. Like, closed. Uh, so I had to pull out the final. And I, was, I remember coming close, dizzy. My head was just like. So got chucked to the hospital. Went to the hospital. 
with the Irish and uh, this day and age they would have took me straight to the neuro centre to get a scan. But back then it wasn't advanced as it is now. Like as you know, it was like this is the late eighties. Um, so go goes goes to the um hospital, discharged me a couple of days later. Um back in there, fell into a coma. Um they give me the last rites, told me told me parents he's um his brain dad dead. Do want to donate his organs in any way because he's um you know he's he's dead. Stayed stayed in the coma for like two weeks, um, and then I just like woke up out of the coma. But when I woke up, I didn't like wake up like ah. Uh, I woke up with one eye, one eye just open, I'm just lying on the bed. One eye didn't know where it was, didn't know what I was doing. I was just I just remember seeing faces around me, and then. And um, from there, I just had a long road then of recovery, re rehabilitation, recovery, you know, the, the ins and outs of it. Like, was like two years it lasted, but the ins and outs was like, at certain times, it was like down, as you can imagine, a fit, healthy, got all my, my life in front of me, all my career in front of me. Whoever I want, whatever I want to be, whether it was boxing, whether it was, do you know what I mean? But I knew it would be in boxing because I was of boxing. Um, and it just like, it was all destroyed and I just had to rebuild my life. <laughs> do you know what I mean? People like to rebuild the career after the loss. I had to rebuild my life, um, which like was heartbreaking for like, my family more than anything because basically, the, let's say the first six months, I didn't really understand or know much about it, about what had happened to me. And I, I just knew I was in hospital, do you know what I mean? I just knew people was about, I couldn't talk, you know. So I, you couldn't walk either, I could you? Couldn't, no, I couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't do nothing. Couldn't do, I couldn't like, no, couldn't do nothing. Like, couldn't fasten buttons, couldn't go to the toilet on my own, couldn't do nothing. So people would say, oh, you couldn't walk. Yeah, I could not walk, couldn't even fucking sit up. Do you know what I mean? So like, it's like, you know, it was like, and when I, like, when I got moved, they used to put me to hospital to hospital, but when I got moved to a rehabilitation centre, that's when everything hit me properly, because I was in this rehabilitation centre, I was in there, like, proper head injuries, young people with um, broken backs, it's just like, it's just a young, it's called the YDU, it was the younger rehabilitation centre, so when I got put in there, it was like, that's when, it all hits home to me. Do you know what I mean? It was like, wow. The realisation. Wow. You know what I mean? And when I was in there, it was like, shh, the things I witnessed, the things I said, I like, I didn't want nobody in there. I, it's just like, I didn't, just my family, because all my friends and friends would be coming. And like, it was just, um, it was just so, so hard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was like, you, you, you can't even like, imagine, how bad it was! You can't, you, you, you can say to people, but you can't imagine how difficult it was. You know what I mean? So just like learning every day, just things we take for granted to do again. Do you know what I mean? Like as you say, before even starting to walk, you know, just like every day using the toilet, getting washed, brushing teeth, just certain everyday things people take for granted. I had to learn to do all them all over again. And it was just like it was, it was, it was hard. Like so, you know, looking back now, it's like wow. Do you know what I mean? But it was like either I walk out of that place, or I'm staying in there. Do you know what I mean? And the power, the, the determination, and the, the willpower I've got, it's like I can't stay here. You know what I mean? And I start getting out then every other weekend. They start to let me out and. Me, me, all my friends had changed because they'd all moved on with their lives, you know what I mean? And like, they're on flashy cars, they're all going out, and there's me just like, fuck basically, do you know what I mean? It was like, and I looked at them and I just, it just, I used to just cry. Like, there was nothing else I could do, I just used to cry. Uh, Frustration. Frustrating, uh, I was like, well, I remember this thing. When I was in the hospital, I used to always get 
Because my nan used to always buy me the, uh, the boxing news. She Stanley bought me the boxing news from the age of 10 every week. <laughs> she had the boxing news up to the ceiling. So anyway, um, I remember I had a, a load of boxing and I had normally had VHS tapes and I had a, a, the, they used to let you put them on the, in the telly in the hospital. And um, the doctor was, some doctor, he said to me, oh, you know you never box. I didn't know this. Oh dear. I didn't know this. I was thinking, I'm going to get better to get boxing again. Because I obviously, no one's told me. I didn't realise of the serality of the injury I had. I just thought, yeah, I'm going to get out of here. I'll be back in the ring. <laughs> you know, but, and then when he told me that, it was like, oh, you, you. Well, I couldn't even talk, but like, it's like, you know. And it's, that, I'll never forget that moment. That moment, like, was the weirdest moment. You know to be mean? told that to you be can't told. box and like, again. I think it was just like a sarcastic fella he was, Professor. He was so bad, and then my mum and my dad come down, um, the hospital because it was a bit out the way, the hospital where it was, and they never drove or nothing. So, you know, they had to travel a couple of buses to get there, but like it was just like, it's, it's just heartbreaking to know that then, for me, and then you know they. So I'd explain it to me then, and then it just went worse and worse and some more. I was just depressed so much. Do you know what I mean? And then I just, I just had to get myself better, and I just started, just recovery started coming. Two years, two years it took. Um, but then I had other issues what what started following it, um, because of the bleed on the brain which he, which he had. So I had more issues coming off a brain injury. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, there we have. So the role to recovery then, your mindset, You like you said, you just want to get out of there. Yeah. You're either going to get better mm -hmm. and leave or you're going to end up staying in there. What is, you, you know, you said that, you know, the sarcastic professor saying, oh, you know, you're never going to box again. The first time anybody's had any interaction with you about the severity mm -hmm. of the injury and the possible, well, the impact on your future is not possibly it was an impact on your future mm -hmm. how do you still find that mindset to say you know what i'm going to recover how do you pull yourself your mates are driving around like you said they moved on with their lives they're driving around in their cars they're doing all their stuff mm -hmm. while you're sitting there after a severe brain injury mm -hmm. what is in your mind to say you know what i'm going to fight this and i'm going to get as well as i can do I mean, look, you're living proof this happened. Mm -hmm. You're sitting here now talking to me about it. Yeah. It's just, what just, made you not give up? Because I, I never give up on anything in my life. I've always been, I'm, I'm born a fighter. I am a fighter. So I, I can't give up, man. It's either in yet or not. So it's in me to be a fighter. I, and that, like, just drove me on and on. I like, I love proving people wrong. So you say to me, can't. I'll say, okay, watch me. And that was at a young age, but now it makes sense. But back then, it never, really, if you get what I'm saying. So it just proved that, like, the fight that I did me. So I was just like, okay, can I? Watch me. And then I just kept getting better and better. And the more physio I had, the more occupational therapy, more speech therapy, they just like, I was just getting better and better. But I still say the one thing... What, like, they give me all them therapies, but the one thing what they never give me was any counselling of any kind. Do you know what I mean? And I, I still think they do to this day. They do, you know, I've been to, um, obviously, I had a bleed on the brain, I had a massive brain injury, I'd, I was paralysed, you know, I had to go through all this really rehabilitation. And obviously, I'm, I've got my whole world, I've got me the future all ahead of me, and no one told me anything. Do you know what I mean? So all that therapy I had was brilliant. It's got on me the physical side. On the physical side, but the mental side, I'm fucked. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm, I'm caught out. The time I've got like back on my feet and like I'm back on road, I'm like, fuck everybody. F watch, f f I'm already being like dead. Do you know what I mean? I've had the last right, so I've been dead, clinically dead. I've been like, does it, the, the, ask my parents, did they want to donate his organs? I was like, don't carry a donor, donor card ever. Um, I thought if I get that in. But like, I just turned into like, 
I just turn bitter and angry with the whole world. I just like we just I was just turning into like a little demon. Do you know what I mean? Started probably doing bad bad shit, you know what I mean? Just like just just mad. When I think about it now it's just like it's embarrassing the stuff I've done. Do you know what I mean? And I went around as like bottom walls and just not bottom walls as bottom walls, but like, you know, bouncing off walls, thinking, what the fuck am I going to do? Do you know what I mean? So I just started just like, like, them times, there was a lot of like, drugs on the streets, and the old drug culture coming then, and everyone was like, grafting and all that, so I just started doing mad madness, do you know what I mean? Which obviously I'm not proud of doing that, but it was just like, this is what it turned me into. It's like people go to prison, good people go to prison, and they come out institutionalised. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because the system yeah. fucks people up. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, it, it, and I think that the, you know, the, the boxing board should look at themselves as well because the, there's, there's, like, me personally, I had a fighter come out, got out of save, saving a long sentence. He had to do four years on, on um, parole on licence. He couldn't get it, he couldn't get his boxing licence because of that. So you got a kid there, what's he supposed to do? You know what I mean? He, he, you know, he can't hold the job down because of his, his, uh, his criminal, record. criminal record. So he, he can't, he, he wants to obviously provide for him. And, you know, he's got a girl, he, his parents, he, you know, there's, he's got no money. And the, what he loves doing, he's got passion for it, he loves doing it. And he can't, he can't do it do because it. The, the, the system stops him. So the system has got a lot of things to answer for and should look at themselves. Because the system fucks a lot of people up. Do you know what I mean? The system and the way he, he, ex offended, ex offenders is like, they're, they're just, they've got no, what can they do except commit another crime and go back to prison? Do you know what I mean? Vicious and no, no one going on to a different thing. But in all, the boxing saves a lot of people, but it fucks a lot of people as well as the same. They get out, they want to get the boxing license, you think. People think, but well, they can't get the license. I understand the uncertain um, crimes, you know, but they should look at that again and, you know, monitor them. And as long as they're in the gym and the training and they're getting out, obviously they're doing good for themselves and the, the, they're being an inspiration to, like, the people, the, the kids who are looking up at them, they can... And be a good mentor to them. They can they, they can do a lot. Do you know what I mean? But there's, they, they they end up getting in that vicious circle, as you said. And do you know, what? there you go. It's a good topic. It, it's a it's an interesting point of view because I suppose in a way you could look at it. And rehabilitation could be that mm -hmm. they do go to the gym. Yeah. They do. You know, they have that as part of rehabilitation um, because it's that discipline and that mindset of getting into a boxing gym because boxing is more than boxing. It provides, it's sort of like, it's like a family mentality uh, and you've got that regime where, you know, you, you get off, you do certain tasks, mm -hmm. you stick to it and you get better and people like routine. So I think that's a valid point that you've touched on um, and there'll be people out there, the viewers out there that will hear that and that will really understand it and understand the frustrations of, like you said, you've got a fighter there that can't fight so what is he going to do? Exactly. Um, it's, you know, it's, not, it's not just my fight. It's, it's be, fighters in general. Others. There's a lot yeah. of fight, As we all know, a lot of fighters come from these inner city areas and, and, you know, with crime backgrounds and whatnot. So, you know, the, you know, you look at the, the world champions, they all come from these areas. Do you know what I mean? So not all, but the majority, most of them all come from somewhere where, like, the upbringing and of being from the ghetto, do you know what I mean? Which is it's fact, do you know what I mean? With a lot of fighters, I know some of them don't, but the ones who do outweigh a lot the ones who do and who don't, do you know what I mean? So um, I think that should change, but that's just my opinion, personal opinion. No, I, I agree. I think a lot I mean? of the best will come from the worst. Yeah, of course. Of um, course. Because that's how we become the best, because we've got that fighter mindset yeah, because we've had to do it yeah, every single way through our life we've had to fight for our place at the table mm -hmm. so I totally agree mm -hmm. with you know like you said uh, certain areas or whatever 
-hmm. We have to chameleonize in life because we always have to try, you know, make ends meet or whatever we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we, we end up being the best because we've had to always fight. Yes. Everything's a fight. So I totally, you know, I agree with that. Yeah. But we're going to push back on because your injury, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, everyone's getting on with their life. But from your uh, head injury, you were diagnosed uh, with epilepsy. Yeah. And epilepsy is another subject that's, that's sensitive, that people tend to whisper behind closed doors. And nobody seems to want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Patrick Day, uh, who recently uh, passed away uh, after about... He, we don't know if he had um, epilepsy. However, he did suffer, I think it was a KO, I think about four months before he had this fight. Mm -hmm. Another KO, and he ended up brain injury, seizure. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he passed away. Talk to me about when you were diagnosed with epilepsy and yet again, something else that's, you know, it's like, how much more can I take? What else are you going to tell me? <laughs> See what you just said there, how much more can I take? That was like, what exactly, how much can I take? And, and no one the doctors told me that, I said, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I, 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 honestly, I won't have it. You mean, my mind said, fuck that. I'm not going to have epilepsy. Do you mean, I'm already, I'm already basically fucked up. So now you're telling me I've got another thing to deal with. I said, nah. And then I had a seizure then, just out of the blue, bam. So After did, the diagnosis? Yeah. So you hadn't had a seizure nah, nah, before? Nah. No, possibility, because I've had a brain injury, I could have epilepsy. So what he said, you should be taking this medication. So I said, nah, not me. As a just in case. Not me, nah, not me. And then when I had one, do you know what I mean? It was like, fucking hell. It was like, my initial thing, it's all happening again. I ended up back in hospital. Do you know what I mean? And there's me, you kept fighting it again. Fuck, you can't tell me. You can't tell me. You know, I know best. You know what I mean? And it happened again. So it happened the second time, obviously, as I, as I wake up and start thinking. Do you know what I mean? And I start to... The, the, what they do, there's a whole range of medication for epilepsy. One in 26 people suffer from epilepsy in this country, in world, worldwide actually, and that's a lot of people. There's no education on it. There's no education in schools on it. There's nobody who knows what in the general public know about it. It's not out there, as you say, it's all brushed under the carpet. It's all, it's all back in, back in the mid centuries. it was, if you had epilepsy, you classed as a, Put in an asylum. It's almost like you, that you're treated like a leper. Yeah. So you are treated like a leper. You go to America, there's massive campaigns. It's massive out there. I mean, I'm in touch with a lot of people out there who, who like the foundations and they're massive on it. You know, actually March the 17th is Purple Day or Epilepsy Day. Do you know what I mean? But in this country, it's like, I done, I done a thing a few years ago, like uh, a small video over it. Oh no, we don't kind of, we can't support that because it's, it's been got combat sports on it. <laughs> so we can't support what you've done there because it's got combat sports. So what was the short video? Yeah, it was a short video. Okay. It's called Wayne's World. It was, it, was, it, was out, it was out about five years ago. It was just a short video of me in the gym. It, you know, um, some fellas done it. Um, nice guy. These guys done it. Just did. But anyway, it's like... It's, they just sweep under the car, but it's like, oh, don't, we don't want that, no one to know that. We don't want to, one in 26 people suffer from epilepsy. There's all different types of epilepsy. Do you know what I mean? With my epilepsy, obviously, it, at my stage now where I am, obviously, I accept it. I've got to, I've got to look, and look at myself and go, yeah, I've got epilepsy. Okay. I can't change that. I deal with it. So I've got it. So I'm going to go. Watch what I'm gonna do. It ain't gonna stop me from what I want to do. It ain't gonna stop me one bit. If anything, it drives me on. Cause it just drives me on. The more I've been through, the more it just drives me on to do bigger and better things. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you should be having rest now. You should. Nah, fuck that. Fuck that. It just drives me. It gives me this. It gives me this feeling and this will inside that like. You my, will not defeat me. Nah, no one beat. Def Listen, nobody will ever defeat me. No, I, I, pff, nobody has been where I've been, and nobody will defeat me. 
and that's the mindset of a fighter and I try and install that into my fighters into my you because you that's the way you've got that right what I've got if I can install that the mind controls the body as you know and you've heard that a hundred times but they don't know you understand you watch all these motivational videos you know and the motivational videos it's a superstar he's a he's, he's actor talking shit do you know what I'm saying but I'm real I'm real man you get me I'm being dead I'm back dead I'm back and I'm still here do you know what I mean you know and then I'm being lumped on the head with fucking big hammers I've got scars all over me do you know what I mean so I've been I've been there I've been back I've been there I've been back and I know now like it's like nobody can beat me nobody I I ain't afraid of nothing and no one. I ain't afraid of death. People are afraid of death. I ain't, listen, that don't faze me. Nothing fazes me. Nothing can faze me. And that's real talk, because I don't, I don't like, I, I see, I like, I don't see how people, like, but then again, it's people, I can't say that because people haven't suffered the trauma I've been through. So I can a little bit, See how they go on when they start moaning over minor things. You know what I mean? Over like, just like relationships and just stupid, like... First just, world problems, yeah, we call them, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, just stupid yeah. things. And it's the, end, it's the end of the world for them. I look at, I look at them and say, like, get your fucking head together. Do you know what I mean? What the, what's that do with you? You think you've got problems? You want to live in my shoes every day? I, that's problems. Uh, you you think you've got problems? <laughs> you don't know about problems, I say to them. And like, but obviously they haven't been through the trauma I've been, they haven't suffered what I've been through. And I, I never used to talk about it because, you know, I was a bit embarrassed about it. I was a bit like, you know, like you say, the whole epilepsy world makes you feel like that. It's, it's sort of like it's shunned, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And it's going back to that, like, leper treatment. Yeah. Like, let's not talk about it. We yeah. won't, we won't yeah. talk about it. The schools aren't educated in it. There's very mm -hmm. rare um, specialists uh, in the country mm -hmm. because it's an unknown. They still don't... Uh, fair enough, you said yours comes from a head injury, mm -hmm. but there are still people that are born with it and they can't actually narrow down why. It's yeah. sort of like this silent thing mm -hmm. that nobody can't really get to grips with. Of course, yeah. And then the, it, it, it's a drug called, it's a drug that you put into you then. And the, the dependency. Yeah. So, you know, I'm on, I'm on medication. I'm st every day I've got out of medicine before, you know, I've tried not taking them. I've been through different types of medication. You know, I'm 50 odd years of age now. So I've been there, done it, got the t-shirt with all that shit. Do you know what I mean? But like, it's like, you get to a stage in your life where you change. You know, you change, obviously, you get older. Everyone does it, you get older. You get, and it's like, okay, look at this. And you try and help people. Like, I don't try and help just boxers. I, 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 I used to go to, there used to be an epilepsy, um, epilepsy, like, once a month in Liverpool meeting. They used to do it in the cl some clinic. So I, I thought, you know what, I'll go. Thinking, I'm going to get help. I end up going there and everyone's got that victim ment mentality. Do you know what I mean? Even the people who are running it don't know about epilepsy because they haven't got it. So like I'm saying to them, how can you uh, talk about something what you don't know First nothing hand. about? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I said, they're all sitting there and they've all got that victim mentality. You want to play victim? Play the victim? I can't play the victim. I said, do you mind if I ever talk to them? And I got up and spoke to them all. Do you know what I mean? And you're like, but they're getting paid to do that. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And you're there doing it for I'm free. I'm doing it for free. Yeah. But, you know, if I can help anybody in any kind, and it was proper made up with me. Do you know what I mean? One of the lads, one of the kids in there, he bought me, a, you know, like a, he just bought me a little presents and all that, which was not, you know, because the attachments he had with them. But, like, I went another time, I ended up speaking to them again. But I'm thinking, you know, I'll do this, but like, it's not me. It's not my job to do it. And I think it gets to a point when you have to have that, like you did, you hit that realisation when you realise you've got to do something. 
you've got to start to help yourself. Yeah, of course. Because not everyone's going to save you, not everyone's going to understand. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the people that were there that were running the group, they hadn't personally experienced it. So it was sort of like they're running it, it's a job, you're mm -hmm. running it blind. Whereas you could go in there with that first hand experience and say, look, this is what happened to me and look where I am now. Yeah. I'm still going, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like I said, it's that warrior mindset, that fighter mindset that you've got, that you've, you know, you've carried through. How old were you, I mean, how old were you when you had that, um, the injury? I was 19. So from 19, 19. and like you said, you're in your 50s now. Mm -hmm. You've just, you've carried on. You, you haven't said, no, I'm going to stop. You haven't thrown your life away. Even though you said you went through some points where you were sort of like, I've ha you know, how much more can I take? Mm -hmm. You're here. Yeah, of course, because I've come full circle. I've come full circle in my life and like, you know, from where I, I, I accept it and deal with it and carry on, do you know what I mean? But it's like, now it's it's all the positives now, yeah. you know? It's a, like, I, I'm not money, I'm not money driven, do you know what I mean? Money don't, can come and go. I wake up in the morning, I say like, another day for me, I'm happy, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't, I don't, like, all I want to do now is just help people. <laughs> that's all I really want to do, and that's all I do. I want to help them in any way I can. That's, 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 just, me, that's just me mentality. Like, it, it's like, obviously, I'm, I'm a coach. I'm a boxing coach. I want my boxers to be the best they can be, whether that's just being an amateur and winning a couple of fights or whether that's going all the way to the top. I want them to be the best they can be. And I drill, I drill this, I just said that warrior mindset, I drill it into them. Because I've got kids in this gym now, which, which are coming up. And these kids are gonna come on up, these kids are the next generation. And they're only all 16 and 17. These kids, I mark my age, you'll look back on this, and you'll say, yeah, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a gym full of champions. champions. Real champions, because it goes from gym to gym, it's it, it stayed, you know, Certain gyms have certain champions at certain times, like football. There's someone's the top, someone's the bottom. I know, I know. The team I've got around me, and with my mindset, all these have got my mindset. I'm drilling into them. And I know that these are all going to be champions. I know, do you know what I mean? With the older ones, it's up to them. It's up to them, do you know what I mean? I've got, like, I've got good kids in the gym, but it's up to them because they're, past the age of 18, do you know what I mean? So it's entirely up to them. Obviously I'll do my best for them, but it's up to them whether they, they stick to the plan or want to go and want to do whatever. That's entirely, I'm not, I can't be with them 24 seven, but when I am with them, I drill that mindset into them. I get them that mindset. And like, as you say, with the with the promotion, with Pat, with, me and Pat are like brothers. We're not like friends, because we're not friends, we're brothers and like, I've got, I've got, he's my best mate, he's my brother, he's my best mate. To me, regardless of whether it was all oh, this, is my, this is nothing, this is my, because we've both got that same mindset, do you know what I mean? And we're both, like, I never told Pat anything about me for years, you know, because I didn't need to. I'm not a victim, so I didn't need to say to Pat, oh, this happened to me, that's happened to me. I didn't need to tell him, do you know what I mean? And when I told him, he's like, huh? Are you serious? Because, but the only reason I, t I tell people now is to help them. To in build that awareness. In, 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 to build the awareness, a willis, and plus to try to motivate, mo motivate, inspire the, the kids who've got epilepsy, who's suffering, do you know what I mean? And like, think that I've got no life, my life's all over, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's all about I can, do you know what I mean? So, I inspire, I want to inspire these kids on adults who got, who are suffering in silence because, you know, you can be, you can be a friend of someone, you can be a, a boyfriend, you can be the mother, the father, but you don't know what they're going through personally if they've got it. Only people who connect with them is the ones who have got it themselves because they know exactly what First they're going hand. through. Other than that, you've got people who are just like, oh yeah, a lot of people, you can say 100%, 80% are not asked. 
Yeah, so another another ten percent are made up. You fucking got it, got it in. That's what people's minds are evil. And the little ten percent don't care about you. Be all right with it. That's about everything in the world. It's not, it's not about just epilepsy or any kind of complaint you've got. You know, the the real fighters is the fighters who are, you go to the hospital. You go and watch the kids in the hospital. They're the real fighters. It's about fighting in the ring. Fighting in the ring is a pleasure. That's that's mine. That's that's that's. Give me that all day, every day. Do you know what I mean? But like, and it's a choice. It's a choice as well. Do you know what I mean? But like, when something just, you have to dig deep and fight. People don't know until they've been in a real fight. People don't know, you know, until they've been in a real fight and in that hole where it's, they think they can't get out of. Do you know what I mean? They're crying out for help, but they're, they're not crying. They're suffering in, in silence. silence. Yeah. That's the people who are real fight. That they're for real fighters. People haven't got a clue how to fight. These boxers, most of them are clowns. I'm that's a real talk. I don't give a fuck if it's on camera. Most of them are clowns. They don't know how to fight. They don't know how to fight. Until you go ten percent of them do. Ten percent of them are fighters. Like you just said, it's a choice. Do you know what I mean? They don't know about real fighting. Do you know what I mean? I ain't tell them all about real fighting. I'll tell anyone about real fighting. And whoever suffers as well, you go to them hospitals, they'll tell you about real fighting. 